everyone and welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Today we're at Universal Studios Hollywood and we're gonna do the VIP tour. Last year we got to do the VIP tour at Disneyland. We've never done it at Universal Studios Hollywood. How is it different? Is it worth it? Come with us on this adventure. First thing that's included with your VIP tour is free valet parking. So you don't have to park all the way over in the structure and walk. You can valet park at Jurassic Parking and it's included. So the entrance to the VIP tour is right to the right of the entrance next to guest services and roll call. Some stuff from Back to the Future. Wow, this is how the rich people live. And VIP lounges with, with all sorts of stills from behind the scenes of movies. They have a whole wall here dedicated to Steven Spielberg. Here is an employment memo. It's when Spielberg was first hired in 1965. Another cool thing is the original script for E.T. It was titled A Boy's Life. When you're doing a VIP tour, they give you a light breakfast. And here's some of the options that are available. Looks like some danishes, some muffins. And they even have some coffee and fruit. And they have this very chill lounge for you to hang out until your store, tour starts. Usually you have like, almost like 30 minutes to hang out here. Just grab some breakfast. And if you don't want to stay inside, you can come out here. Eat on the patio overlooking the courtyard. When you go on this tour, they give you a VIP experience badge that gets you onto all the rides without having to wait. And then they also give you a poncho. So if you go on Jurassic World to ride, you don't have to get wet. Has anyone done this tour before? No. Uh, this is the way to do it. This is what we'll get you into like three days worth of stuff today, all right? And you don't have to remember all of this, but uh, we will not only show you the movie studio in a way that none of you have ever done it. Because if you come in with a general admission ticket or an express pass, you're on a really good tour, holds about 170 people, and you see about 45 minutes of the studio. We have our own vehicle just for us. And we will get out and walk around. We will show you sets today from Spider-Man movies, Batman films, Captain America, Austin Powers, classics that go way back to Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman. Uh, so after we do all of that, we've got an entire theme park to show you. So Jurassic World, The Revenge of the Mummy, Transformers, The Simpsons, The Wizarding World of Harry Potter, a couple of attractions, and lots more to see in there. When we break for lunch, we have our, uh, a, a private dining area just for our VIP guests. And listen, our theme park food is great. I think it's the best there is. But this is different than that. This is set up by people who are master chefs in the movie studio and laid out like you're on a set. I should mention that Kitra couldn't make it here today because of her injury. But I'm gonna try to do this vlog solo and hopefully I'm able to capture everything and it's not gonna suck without Kitra. Fingers crossed. Right now we're headed to the studio tour. On the VIP tour, you actually get to get off on the back lot on the studio tour. Fingers crossed. Courtyard, Courthouse Square from Back to the Future. Favorite movie of all time. Hopefully it's open. Uh, sorry to break it to everyone, but there are they filming in the courtyard, so we can't have access what to the it. Heck, Francis? I know, I'm sorry. Why? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> my dreams, you crushed my dreams. I try my best. That's the only bad thing. This is the working studio, which means you never know what's going to be filming and what's not going to be filming, what's opening, what's not going to be open. But sometimes you get to see some actual movies or TV shows getting filmed on the back lot. You are going to love it. You're at a theme park on a Wednesday, folks. So on the normal tour, you're on this long tram. But on the VIP, you got the small plush bus. Each seat has its own 3D glasses. The ceiling is fluffy. It all looks elegant and special, and I'm excited. Mike, everybody, please say hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. That was that was like a cult right there. That was like that was perfect. Uh, all right, so welcome aboard, everybody. Now we have a ton of stuff to show you. These buildings are where most building takes place because you have control over every shooting aspect, lighting, sound, and motion control. They're virtually soundproof. We are going to drive through a couple of those stages today. Hey guys, look over on your left. This area is about as important as it gets for our movie studio. Currently, the most uh, filmed area. Take a look at those brownstones over there. Do you see them? 
Macaulay Culkin chucked all kinds of things off that top floor in Home Alone 2. Now, I know we have some Back to the Future fans, and if I could walk you up to the courthouse, I would. I can't, but I'm going to give you the next best thing. Yes! So awesome! Oh, what? Does that look familiar? So cool. It's the entrance, like statues from Back to the Future, the Lion Estates. Didn't get to see Courthouse Square, but we got to see this. And they're letting us get photos in front of the signs, which is really cool. Something you couldn't do on the normal tour. There was graffiti on the back from Back to the Future Part 2, but here's the deal. You can feel the material is not concrete. It's wood and plaster. So ultimately when it sits out here, you do have to give it a facelift every once in a while, but these are the props. How cool is that? Um, so it's literally Back to the Future history. Yeah. Like an art of, these are like hey guys, museum, gonna, dude. Oh, museum stuff. <laughs> Once upon a time in Hollywood, almost a third of that movie takes place on this street. And the structures have not changed. As they've used this over and over. Initially, this area was constructed around 1914. Every famous cowboy, cowgirl you could ever imagine. All shot films or TV shows right here. It's funny, when you go up to the, one of these buildings and you actually look inside, it's actually nothing inside there. And this is the back of that facade that I just showed you. So it's completely empty and it looks like they have a set down there. Let's look inside this facade. Wow, look at the inside. Normally you wouldn't be able to walk down here. You just drive down here really quick on the studio tram. But it's cool. Mondo! Well, I know, I was like, we're walking in cinema history, like literally. It's so cool. <laughs> it's cool like going up to this, like, you actually get to like stand on it. What are you guys thinking about all this? I'm just trying to soak too all of this in. in. This is too crazy. I just <laughs> love like being able to get off of the tram. The tram. Like that's the around. best part. Yeah. It's so cool. Here it comes. This may be a little more water than we're used to, but uh... Even the traditional parts of the studio tour are a little bit better. Like, for instance, on the normal studio tour, you have this long, long tram. And when you go into the King Kong section, if you're in the front of the tram or you're in the back of the tram, you get not as good of a view. But here, because this is like a small bus, you get put in the center, perfect seating, it looks awesome. Then when we got to Jaws, when the shark was coming out of the water, the bus driver backed up the bus. So the shark kept on coming at us, kept splashing us. It was awesome. Then he was like, oh, do you want to go onto the set of Jaws? So he pulled over, and now we're walking around Amity. Oh, you know this is gonna be a part of this? Dude, I, I, we're about to watch this happen. Like, I had no idea. <laughs> This is so cool. I never thought I would be here on this side watching the tram go by. This is amazing. I've never stepped on any set here in the back of Universal Studios and the magic I'm feeling right now is just, <laughs> oh my gosh. It's overwhelming. I know, don't fall in. <laughs> Even when they backed up. <laughs> like this, whoa. <laughs> I'm off. How awesome. It's so cool. It's my favorite thing so far, like fake Jaws. I love it. How cool is this? This is so cool. I, I didn't even know this existed low key. Dreams come true. We're getting to walk on the set of Murder, She Wrote right now, guys. Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> That's true. I, I am sad that Kitra's not here, though, because she would have loved this. She, oh. If you're wondering what's in any of these buildings, Nothing. 
We're so excited today's video is sponsored by Audible. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks ranging from bestsellers to new releases. Each month, members get credits good for any audiobook, and that's yours to keep forever. The audiobook that I'd like to recommend to you this time is Disney War by James B. Stewart. If you are a fan of the Disney Company, if you love the theme parks and you haven't read this book, what are you doing? This is this chronicles the downfall of Michael Eisner, who is the CEO and chairman of the Walt Disney Company, and how the company basically got put into like a civil war of sorts. It's so fascinating, so interesting, and it's a piece of Disney history, so go listen to it. You can download the titles to listen to offline anytime, anywhere, but not only that, you also get access to their entire Plus catalog filled with thousands of audiobooks, even original entertainment, and even podcasts. I've been an Audible subscriber for seven years now. I love listening to Audible while I'm going to sleep, I'm walking the dogs, traveling. It's a great way to like be entertained while you're on the go. Give yourself the gift of listening for more information, go to audible.com slash ordinary or text ordinary to 500, 500 Thanks, Audible. And now back to our adventure. We're going to take a little walk around the good place. The sets are falling apart. Yes, they are. It's not a secret. Why? Because everything around us now, you know, it's built out of plaster, yeah. plywood, fiberglass. So none of the buildings in our back lot that are meant to be sets are made or built out of, mal out of um, durable materials. So things do fall apart. So years before The Good Place, a little movie called Pirates of the Caribbean filmed right here. So this little corner was Port Royal. And I want to show you a little bit about the filmmaking process. They go up those stairs, they don't see him. They cross the archway and they end up in the ocean. If you guys want to check, I promise there's no water, there's no ocean. <laughs> it's not built to be filmed inside. It's just an exterior set. So that scene that's less than five minutes long at the beginning of the movie took place in three different locations, including in the ocean, in a different country, in the Caribbean. So filmmaking, it's usually all out of order. And in post-productions, once they're, once they're done filming, they put everything seamlessly. When you watch the movie, you cannot tell. Also, isn't that movie a Disney movie? Well, guess what? Disney loves our European sets. This is what we call the sets, Little Europe. So it's not really the good place, even though it was the good place for four years. But for us, this is Little Europe. So in a movie, they might film this right here, but you don't go this far because there's a big wall right there. Or if you come this far, then maybe you put a green screen right there. It's funny how many of the 3D glasses have like ended up here <laughs> in the dust. Oh, you guys, we're stuck. We're stuck, and this is an earthquake. You guys seem to be more interested in building. What's going on? Uh-oh. Not over. I hope that I have to do that. We just want to say hi. What's happening? Oh, no. Oh, no. Look at that grid. Oh, my goodness. Psychotic, yes, but now he's coming for us. Let's get out of here. So this is something I've done on the Terror Tram at Halloween Horror Nights, but they're letting us get off at the crash site from War of the Worlds, the Steven Spielberg film. And usually I'm here and there's it's dark and there's clowns chasing me with chainsaws. But right now it looks like the movie. Steven Spielberg bought this plane uh, for the movie for about $60,000. Honestly, not a lot for a plane. But to cut it up and drive it here costs about a quarter of a million dollars. Nice. You guys can tell how old the plane is because take a look at the armrests. What do you see? Smoking. Smoking. Oh Ashtrays. Yes, this plane was from the 70s. The reason why there's no ceiling on the plane, no roof, it was so tall it wouldn't fit under an overpass when they were driving on the freeway. Um, so they were probably going to glue it back on, but once Steven Spielberg and his production designer Rick Carter saw the set, they thought, you know what, it looks incredible. Just leave it as is. What Tom Cruise sees is what you guys are seeing right now. Here's the big question. What happened to everyone on the plane? You know there were people in the plane because there's suitcases. We have clothing. They just vanished. There's no blood. There's no victims. There's nothing left behind. So again, when you see this in the movie, you don't know it's an alien attack movie. Tom Cruise, 
He doesn't know it's aliens that are after him. So this is setting up the horror of what's coming. Everybody's getting photos of the set, and like, yeah. even though I've been here for Halloween Horror Nights, they keep you moving, and it's dark, so you can't really get photos. It's cool having a photo here on this iconic movie set. You don't see all the detail of this when you like drive by. Oh, they put some lights here, so I've never been able to look back here. This is cool. Yeah. Like, we got a lawnmower. <laughs> Crazy all the little details they have here, like luggage hanging and just like pieces of like Mondo said that lawnmower. Like you wouldn't see it in the movie, but it's it's here. If you could if you could like zoom in, I mean I guess if you could walk around the set, you see it. We're going back on the bus. One thing I didn't mention is water? they have some cold water for you. So if you want a drink, it's included. Everybody up! The FBI! Turn that music off! We don't work for nobody. Let's go, Cookie Puss. Ready, Roman, we're up. How about you eat asphalt? Don't think you're getting away. Oh, my God. Yeah, we made it. So to give you an idea, we got here, we got breakfast. It was a two and a half hour backlot tour. And now we're on the lower lot. And we're gonna go on the three rides down here and then grab lunch. Right there, that's perfect. We'll have you hang out right about here. One of the cool things is with this VIP tour, they give you a free poncho, so you don't need to get wet during Jurassic World. I normally don't get the ponchos, but I'm gonna do it this time. Getting wet, Ned. You're the target right now. <laughs> are you getting wet? I'm flying off. Not a single drop on me. Why are you wearing your poncho? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. It's gonna squirt right at me. Don't worry. Oh! Are you kidding me? <laughs> Assets out of containment and help is on the way. In the meantime, listen to me. Do not panic. If you can see me, I need you to keep your hands inside the bowl. The slightest movement will set these animals off. Francis, you regret not oh getting it. Oh my gosh, there's... No. no. <laughs> <laughs> 
we're fine without the poncho. I got a little wet, but we're good. It's good. Happy birthday, wizard. Uh, everybody good? Yeah. yeah. So normally, Universal Express is a different entrance. Yeah. This is, for this attraction, it's a VIP entrance. I've never gone through this. This is cool. So in the VIP entrance, you go right in and load into the vehicle. On the, the Express entrance, you actually have a little bit of a key. In. So we've only been in the lower lot for 45 minutes and we've already done three rides. That includes Jurassic World, Transformers, and The Mummy. I don't even think you could accomplish that with an express pass, so that's pretty solid. So it's 2 p.m. and we're about to head to lunch. They're gonna have a nice lunch set up for us at the Moulin Rouge. I've never eaten there. It's only for VIPs. Let's see how VIP it actually is. So inside, if anybody has dietary concerns or questions about the cuisine, We'll let the chefs and the host know they'll take very good care of you, okay? Thank you. Welcome to the Moulin Rouge. Here we go. Oh. Find your seat, get situated. I'll be here for a minute. What is he and then it's back to the future. Doc, I didn't expect to see you here. Really? Why not? We've seen each other here before. In the future? And the past. What is the best thing to eat here? I'll tell you a secret. Everything. <laughs> Depending on what you like, everything is good. So in the Moulin Rouge, they have a whole buffet. They have roasted chicken, roasted salmon, barbecue pork pizza. There's lobster risotto, penne pasta, mac and cheese, rice, mashed potatoes, grilled asparagus. There's a whole lot of salad. And look at the desserts. The desserts here look pretty good as well. I love that they have so many vegan options and dairy-free options, so there's something for everyone to enjoy, which I feel is really important. In case you're wondering, they do have some infused water, some pink lemonade, some sodas, and even some other carbonated beverages down here. They also have a selection of ice cream and gelato, if you want some of that. So here's a look at my plate. I got some tri-tip, some horseradish, some berries, that green cheese, some hummus, some orange cheese. We got potatoes. Got some, uh, some kind of pasta, and I had to get these uh, chicken tenders. They don't look good, but you know, I love chicken tenders, so why not? And you eat here, and you have like a nice view out into the valley. Actually, a nice view of Super Nintendo Land. And if you need to charge your phone, they even have a charging bank that you can plug your phone in while you eat. For dessert, I got this mini apple pie, New York cheesecake chocolate dipped strawberry, and here's a chocolate chip cookie. It has a bunch of different kinds of chocolates in there, it looks like. Oh my god, Snowball is out. I have never actually been here when Snowball was here. Snowball! What's up? How you doing? You're, you're never here whenever I'm here. I'm never here? No. Where do you come? I, I don't know. You come a lot? Yes. Now you never see me? No. Well, well, well. Well, now we finally meet. What is your name? My name's Peter. Peter? Peter. Peter! Yeah. Nice to meet you, Peter. My name is Snowball, but you knew that. <laughs> you knew that. All right, Peter. Let's see, Peter. What's your favorite ride here, Peter? Uh, probably Jurassic World ride. Get out of here, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Peter. I'm just kidding. But you've been on my ride, though, right? Yes, I like your ride a lot. Okay, I understand. The Jurassic Park has the thrills, the chills, and the, uh, the spills. No, thank you. I don't like to get wet. I still look good when I wear, but I don't, I don't like it at all. Have you ever been on it? I have, the one time. Nuh uh, but I saw what they did to that goat in that movie. No, no more. I'm not playing around with those dinosaurs. No, thank you, Peter. No, thank you. <laughs> you look like a fan, though. Is that a Jurassic Park shirt? Yeah. Ooh, you're a big fan, aren't you, Peter? <laughs> you like those dinos? <laughs> yeah. Those dinos are up to no good. I'm telling you that much right now, Peter. Yeah, I, I think it's a bad idea to open that theme park with dinosaurs. I think it's a bad idea. I'm glad to keep us cute, fuzzy animals up here and them all the way down there. <laughs> if dinosaurs learn how to learn, use escalators, we all in trouble, Peter. We're all in trouble. <laughs> Peter, I'm so glad we finally got to meet you. Yeah, I'm, finally, I, I'm happy I finally got to meet you. I hope it was everything you could have dreamed of. It is. Today I'm on a VIP tour for the a first A VIP? Ooh, la la, Peter! <laughs> You get some filet mignon for lunch? I did. That's right, some shrimps? Yeah, there are no Ooh, shrimps. Ooh, baby, did you take some in your pockets, Peter? 
Come on now, you can tell me, Peter, did you put some in your pockets? No, no, I didn't. They're not for laying y'all in your pockets right now, Peter. Th they're not. Get out of here, Peter. Okay, I'll ah, just get yeah, okay, Peter. It was nice meeting you, my man. It really was. I'm glad. I hope you can see me again. I, I'm, I'm great. To, uh, I'm happy to finally meet you. I'm happy to finally meet you. Next time you do a VIP, buy me a ticket too. <laughs> I work here. I don't even get to see you around the park. My goodness. You enjoy yourself, Peter. Peace and love, man. Peace and love. So after lunch, we went to Secret Life of Pets and then Despicable Me. I got to talk to Snowball. And now we're headed to Waterworld where they have reserved seating for us. And I'm excited. I wonder if it's going to be in the Splash Zone. Think it's going to be in the Splash Zone? I hope it's in the Splash Zone. <laughs> Close the gate. Feast your eyes on this. This is pure dirt! How'd you come by this? I picked a dry land! Dry land is a myth! No, no! Hey, hey, hey! Did I see anybody gonna leave before the party was over? He sprayed me! Give me the gun. Get on that ladder and get that door for me! I need that door! When I say take this guy's head off, I want you to take this guy's head off. Ah! Oh. Get off! Get off! Oh. Get off! Oh. 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 That looked painful. There, no, look out! Hey, fish boy, look what I found, Big Bertha. Whoa! <laughs> Mariner? Mariner! Then why don't you just show me the way? Oh! Mariner! Adios, cousin! Oh my god, they're putting the, the plane back over the wall. We're gonna finally get to see how they do it for never, I have no idea how they do this. Let's see. We've never seen this. <laughs> Here's a quick note, this is a do not record. Oh. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Fortunately, I can't show you. It was, you would not believe how it got over the, it was very cool. I mean, we can't. We just can't tell you. We can't tell you. We can't, we can't show tell you. you. Yeah. It was the coolest thing in the world. I wish I could show you. Yeah. <laughs> so we're about to do the last two rides in the Wizarding World, but I thought many of you probably are wondering how much does a VIP tour at Universal cost? It varies per day. We are here on a weekday, and I think it's like three hundred and thirty dollars per today. And I think the Express Pass is like two twenty, and a normal ticket is like one ten, something like that. So it's about triple the price of a normal ticket. Is it worth that? Honestly, I would say if you are not a regular annual pass visitor here, you're, you're coming as a tourist, it could be very well worth your money. You get that continental breakfast, you get that really nice buffet lunch, and you get on all the rides, all the shows, you get to walk on the, the, the back lot. The VIP tour at Disneyland is like around $6,000 for, for a group. I think a group of like 10, or something people. It's a great value comparatively to Disneyland. There are a lot less rides and experiences here. I was actually very impressed. The Dry Wizard Tournament! It's from the Bobaton Academy of Magic.
the proud sons of Damstray. If you want to see some of our previous trips to Universal Studios Hollywood, we'll put the videos right over there. We want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes Eric Larson, Aaron Snyder, Boris Bewing, and Aaron and Alan. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next adventure. Hopefully with Ketra.